Hey guys, Level Cap here, and today I'm going to tell you which are the best ships to buy in Star Citizen. Whether you're pledging your real world money or saving up Alpha UEC in game, it can really help to get a second opinion before making a big purchase. Now, I've been fortunate enough to have flown pretty much all the ships in Star Citizen, and if you're looking to maximize your opportunities in game at the best possible price, then that's what I'm going to help you with today. Now, just to clarify, this following list of ships isn't going to focus on necessarily the coolest ships in Star Citizen, though some of the ones I'm going to talk about are extremely cool, but instead I wanted to focus more on the best ships for running through the various gameplay loops that are offered at the moment. So for example, I love the Hammerhead and the 890 Jump, but both of those ships aren't particularly useful when it comes to efficient mission running. They can be a lot of fun to run missions with, but they're just not really practical choices at the moment, just cool choices. Naturally, many ships will become more useful as new features are added to the game, and of course this list is subjective and certainly will change as the game evolves with new content. So with that said, let's get into it. The first ship on this list is the C8X Pisces Expedition, a ship that can be purchased as a starter pack for about $60 or just bought in-game for about 400,000 AUEC. The Pisces is a great mission runner for all early game missions and still one of my top picks for any bunker running. The Pisces is a surprisingly nimble ship. It has four size 1 guns, a single size 1 shield, for SCUs of cargo space, it can fit as many people as you could ever want to take with you, and it has enough quantum fuel to make it across the Stanton system without having to make a pit stop. Getting into and out of the Pisces is incredibly fast, in fact it's probably one of the fastest ships to get into and fly away with. It's also small and very easy to land pretty much anywhere, which is perfect if you're chaining bunker missions together or box missions and you just want to minimize your travel time you can just land super close to your objective and pop on out of the ship. It also has a very fast insurance claim time so you can spawn it anywhere very quickly and it can be spawned at vehicle pads by outpost which is great if you get stranded for some weird reason. It can also fit in many different ship cargo bays and certainly pretty much any fighter bay so it can be used as a snub fighter or your away mission shuttle. It's certainly not my top choice as a fighter, but you'd still be a fool to disregard this ship in combat. So while the Pisces probably isn't the ship that you've got your eyes set on for endgame, it's incredibly practical and one that I find myself using all the time, regardless of the fact that I have most of the ships that I want. Now the second ship on this list is the Avenger Titan, aka the Penguin, or the thing that looks like a space shuttle. This ship can also be purchased in a starter bundle for $70 or 785,000 AUEC in game. Mine is blue and gold because I like to be special, but normally this guy looks white and black. It's an excellent all-purpose mission runner, but packs a lot more punch than the Pisces, has more shields, 8 SCUs of cargo space, and a bed for logging off. This ship can literally take you through 95% of the mission content in the game, plus it's a ship that you can call home. Also, something that you'll really start to appreciate after trying different ships out is the amazing visibility here. With a game that looks this good, it's always nice to have a ship that gives you a fantastic view. Now, one of the best things about this ship is that it allows you to explore the universe and also get a feel for what you like to do in it. If you want to get good as a fighter pilot, it's perfectly capable of trading blows with even the best dedicated fighters. There's not too many ships in the verse that can do that while also carrying cargo and a bed. Now the third ship on this list has to be one of the most popular ships in the verse, the Drake Cutlass Black. The Cutlass platform itself has been so successful and loved by fans that there's now a Cutlass Blue, a Cutlass Red, and a Cutlass Steel variant. Each one offers slightly different benefits, but it's tough to beat the Black's versatility. Again, it can be purchased as a starter ship option at 115 bucks, making it a bit pricier, or you can buy it in game for 1.3 million AUEC. Now why do people like this ship so much? Well, the Cutlass is probably one of the most versatile and fun entry level multi-crew ships in the game. It's got a turret on top, a co-pilot seat, two beds, a gun rack, tons of cargo space, and a ramp which you can use to load ground vehicles. You can use it to ferry mining vehicles around or even hot drop hover bikes into a combat zone. 
It has sizable quantum fuel tanks, so you don't have to refuel too often, and its quantum drive can be upgraded to extremely fast variants, so you can get around Stantum in no time. The pilot has access to four size 3 hard points for weapons. It comes with a single size 2 shield and six size 4 missile racks. This thing is no slouch in combat, and a skilled pilot and gunner team can run pretty much every level of bounty target in the game. And though it's possible to run the highest level, I wouldn't really recommend it for ERTs. Now, it is hard to mention the benefits of playing with the Cutlass without mentioning the Freelancer. That ship is the closest competitor to the Cutlass, and without going down the comparison rabbit hole, I would say that the Freelancer has the edge in cargo running, where the Cutlass is just a bit more fun to fly and has a better layout, in my opinion, for multi-crew gameplay. Now, the fourth ship on this list has to be one of the best all-around combat ships, period. The Aegis Vanguard Harbinger two-seat heavy fighter. It's honestly hard to think of a combat situation that this fighter can't handle. The pilot has control of four custom size 2 weapons and a single size 5 hardpoint, making it one of the highest pilot seat damage dealers in the game. You can outfit it with laser repeaters and vaporized fighters, or you can swap out to, say, laser cannons and take down hammerheads without too much sweat. This was my ship of choice that I used to grind my bounty reputation up as fast as possible. Oh, and it also comes with four size size 4 missile racks plus a size 5 missile rack. And in case you've never fired one before, well, a size 5 torpedo is no joke and can be used to soften up even the hardest of enemies. Now, annoyingly, the top turret comes with some crappy missile pods for weapons, but once you swap that out, the gunner can actually get access to two size 3 repeaters, making them excellent for fighter cover or just sustained DPS on a bigger target. The ship also comes standard with two size 2 shields, a long range quantum fuel tank, the option to install an incredibly fast quantum drive, two beds for logging out in space, a weapons rack, and enough room for a box or two if you want to run some box missions. There's very few ships in the game that come with this level of firepower and even mission running versatility. The Vanguard Sentinel variant is also extremely good, where it swaps out the size 5 torpedo launcher for an EMP generator, and many prefer this variant for PvP. VP combat. Now the number 5 ship on this list has been in the game for a long time, but man is it still one of the most useful multi-crew ships, and that is the Constellation Andromeda. And for a ship of its size and capabilities, the Andromeda is incredibly cheap with an in-game price of about 3.5 million. It has 4 gimbaled Rhino repeaters for the pilot, it carries 24 size 2 missiles and 28 size 1 missiles, cause why wouldn't you want to rain fire? Two turrets in pretty good firing positions, a sizable 96 SCU cargo bay that can also fit ground vehicles, and a snub fighter docked in the back. This was one of the first big multi-crew ships in Star Citizen, and it still retains a huge amount of functionality in the Persistent Universe. It's certainly a more sluggish ship, so get ready for slow turn speeds, but that doesn't mean it can't handle itself in combat, and it's still one of the top picks for taking down hammerheads and bounty missions. It's actually very capable even if you only have a pilot flying it, and if you want to bring your friends along, well, that really unlocks the true potential of this ship. There's quite literally nothing in the game at the moment that this ship isn't suited to handle. All right, now the number six ship on this list is getting much more specific with what it's intended to be used for. The Aegis Gladius is one of the most used light fighters in the verse. It's got three size three weapons, two size one shields, fantastic agility, and a small profile, at least when seen head on, which is probably the only angle this ship will ever give you in a combat situation. It's arguably one of the best light fighters for PvP combat, and it's also great fun when used for taking on bounty missions like very high risk targets. This is the kind of ship that's more or less only limited by the skill of the pilot and, well, not much else. So if your goal is to become the best fighter pilot in the verse, well, it's hard to go wrong with this classic. It's also the premier fighter in Squadron 42, so go figure, of course it's going to be a pretty good one. Now with all that said, there are tons of ships in the game right now currently vying for that top light fighter spot, and many may argue that something like, say, the Anvil Arrow is a superior fighter with better atmospheric handling and generally more nimble characteristics. However, the Arrow only has a single size 1 shield, which means Arrow pilots don't have a lot of room for error. The Gladius is superior 
survivability gives it the edge in usefulness in my opinion, but if you're in like the top 1% of pilots out there, well, you might prefer the arrow over this just because you're good enough at dodging shots. All in all, at 1.1 million, the Gladius is a fantastic buy for a fighter platform that will allow you to take on the best pilots in the verse. Now, at number 7, we have an obvious choice, the Misk Prospector Solo Mining Ship. There's currently only two mining ships in the game at the moment, and the Prospector is, well, more practical and affordable. At 2 million Alpha UEC, it's not super cheap, but as you figure out how to maximize your earn rate, 2 million will start to feel like chump change. Mining is arguably one of the fastest ways to make money in the game, and this ship will let you earn enough to buy, well, pretty much whatever you want. The Prospector has fantastic fantastic visibility for searching for rocks, and a very easy transition between piloting and mining modes. It also comes with a bed for logging out in the middle of a lengthy mining operation. If chilling out and cracking space rocks is your jam, then the Prospector is what you want. Now at number 8, we're getting into some more advanced logistics and trading gameplay with the Crusader C2 Hercules Starlifter. There's a ton of viable trading ships in the game that are cheaper, like the Raft, Freelancer Max, Cutlass Black, Hole, Caterpillar, and Constellation Taurus, but when it comes to hauling capacity, nothing beats the Hercules. Now it is worth mentioning that the Cargo Refactor update is not in the game yet, which may give some ships like the Caterpillar an edge over this if they end up getting faster load and unload times, but at least for the time being, you're not going to find any ship with more cargo capacity and enjoyable flight characteristics at this size. The C2 handles very nicely and is actually fun to fly in atmosphere, featuring better acceleration and turn rates than its top competitors. 696 SEUs of cargo space give you unparalleled internal storage, and it's also one of the only ships capable of ferrying heavy combat vehicles like the Nova Tank and Ballista. Now anyone who does trading regularly knows that easily disembarking from your ship is a big part of making your runs quick, and for its size, the Starlifter actually has a fairly convenient convenient elevator that takes you right out of the ship. It's also got two size 3 shields making it extremely tanky. It comes stock with gimbaled size 4 cannons for the pilot which can deal with the game's current interdiction threats pretty easily and then of course it has additional turrets with ample firepower. Now at 4.9 million this ship is not cheap. It's kind of your end game trading ship but it offers considerable benefits over its main competitor the Caterpillar which sells for 4.6 million. Now with some other highly competitive cargo ships like the Whole C coming down the production pipeline and Cargo Refactor coming in 318, it'll be interesting to see how the world of cargo hauling evolves. Alright, at number 9 we have a combat ship that can earn money, well, just as fast as some of the best miners in the game. That is the Aegis Eclipse. And who doesn't like a stealth bomber? Well, the answer to that question is anyone being attacked by a stealth bomber. If this ship doesn't want you to see it, well, you're not going to see it. Knowledgeable pilots can turn off shields and various components to get its radar signature down to just a few kilometers. And considering its size 9 torpedoes have a range of 30 kilometers, the Eclipse really doesn't have much reason to put itself in danger. It's certainly a fun ship for screwing around in PvP and may even become the ultimate gank ship for putting down expensive trade runs, but when it comes to the persistent universe right now, it can burn through extreme risk target bounty missions faster than anything else. Those missions require you to kill a hammerhead and they pay 25,000 plus the call to arms bonus. This ship can get in quickly, launch a torpedo, single shot the hammerhead and get out without having to deal with the ads. Then you simply queue up another ERT and repeat until you have to go get some more torpedoes. I'd definitely say that the skill needed to operate this ship versus what it can earn in game is a bit out of balance at the moment. Perhaps torpedoes will become a bit more skill based down the road, but in the meantime this ship is easy money. That is, once you're able to buy one for 3.4 million and grind your reputation all the way up to the maximum bounty hunter rank. Now the last ship on the list is a very expensive ship, but it's one that offers one of the best multi-crew experiences and an onboard regeneration point. The Anvil Carrick. At 26 million for an in-game purchase, most players probably won't be grinding for this ship versus just buying it in the pledge store. 
And while it is perfectly attainable in universe, well, that is a lot of mining or extreme risk targets. It'll take you a while to buy this sucker. But honestly, the Carrick is worth it. It is such a fantastic ship for doing any type of activity with your friends. It has four powerful turrets, a snub fighter bay to carry a second ship on board, a front cargo ramp that can carry ground vehicles, a full med bay that can even serve as a regeneration point, a massive cargo capacity that actually makes it one of the better hauling ships in the game, and even enough quantum fuel to last you for hours of play before ever needing to look at your actual fuel gauge. Now one of the few downsides of this ship is that it completely lacks weapons for the pilot, but again if you approach it with the intention of using it as primarily a multi-crew ship, well then it's hard to beat. And of course you can always wait till they come out with blade technology to make those turrets automated. Now the respawn point on this ship is invaluable. Set your respawn to the Carrick, go on a bunker mission, and if you die, well, you're gonna spawn right back on your ship and you can go reclaim your stuff. Now the Carrick is intended as a long range exploration vessel and I would imagine that this is gonna become even more useful once Pyro is added to the game. And in fact, this ship's main purpose of exploration isn't even fully built out as a gameplay loop yet. And it should also be noted that the respawn point for the medical bay is intended to go away at some point down the road, but for the time being, it's incredibly useful and makes it a fantastic ship. Now again, there are so many ships that are currently flyable in this game and tons that are worth checking out that aren't on this list. I mentioned a lot of highly generalized ships here that can do a lot of stuff in the game, but if you're specifically focused on one task and you really want a ship that caters exactly to how you like to play, well that ship might have not been mentioned here. A lot of Star Citizen is personal preference and aesthetic appeal as well. But if you're trying to figure out the best bang for your buck ships, well, then this list is honestly nothing but the best. Now there's a few runner up ships here that I kind of want to just throw in at the end. I already mentioned that the Freelancer is a good alternative to the cut list if you want something that's maybe a little bit more hauling oriented. There is also another variant of the Cutlass that is extremely useful in the current iteration of Star Citizen and that's the Drake Cutlass Red. This one comes with a medical bed on board which makes it a fantastic bunker running ship. And although you can't use it as a respawn point, you can use it to heal after missions and top off your food and water. Now again, this is my list. It is subjective. I know some people out there will have their own idea of what the best ships in the game are, and I'd love to hear your takes in the comments. The ship variety in Star Citizen is truly staggering. It is so much fun exploring them all and trying out different ones. I fly ships that aren't on this list all the time just because they're fun, unique, and interesting ships to fly. But if you're somebody getting into Star Citizen or just doesn't really have a good idea about what ship they might want to upgrade to in the future, well, I hope this list gives you some good ideas going forward. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. And I'll catch you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.